Hey y'all, it's your girl Tanika with Tanika Donnell Realty. And in honor of Black History Month, I am again with another trailblazer in the area. Today I get to welcome Mr. Joseph Moses. He is the Director of Parks and Recreations in Irving, Texas. Joe, thank you Thanks for, for having being me, here. Y'all, let me tell you a funny story. Joe's a great guy. He is actually our neighbor and he has amazing stories that I think would be great to share with you guys. So Joe, thank you for taking the time to be here. It's my pleasure, Tinky. Well, tell us a little bit. I know you come from some great lineage. Your dad, for example, was the first African-American police officer in Troy, New York. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Do you remember that as a child? Tell us a little bit about that. No, no that was actually, it was about 10 years before I, I was born. It was okay. back in 1957, mm -hmm. 56, 57. My father became the first African-American police officer for the city of Troy, New York. Wow. And with that, now you are the first African-American Parks and Recreations Director for Irving. Yeah, you know, it, it, <laughs> And it was kind. Of, it kind of snuck up on me. I really didn't think about it. I was. Um, my dad passed away back in, in nineteen, and I was just going through some things, mm -hmm. uh, looking back at some things, and it just kind of dawned on me that I am the first African American director of Parks and Recreation for the city of Irving, and just how things kind of mirrored between exactly. me and him. So, yeah. Well, how did you get into that role? What was your kind of uh, matriculation up to the corporate ladder to get you know, there? Um, I, I got into parks and recreation actually by accident. Um, uh -huh. I've always worked in the field. I worked in boys and girls clubs and, and CYO organizations back in New York. Okay. So when I came to Texas, um, it was easy for me to get a job in that field while I was going to school. Sure. I was okay. originally going to school for um, mass communications, mass comm. Really? Yep. Okay. I was a communications major. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I ended up getting, I was at a gym in Grand Prairie and I was working, I was playing basketball uh -huh. and the guy that was um, ran the gym was getting ready to hire his summer staff. Okay. And so he asked me, he goes, um, do you know anybody that wants to work this summer, can run a summer camp? And I was mm -hmm. telling him about my experiences in New York. And he was like, great. And um, mm. funny thing was one of the questions he asked me was, um, can you drive a bus? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I could drive a bus, which, which I, yeah, I could drive a bus, <laughs> not realizing that they were going to have me driving a bus. And uh, <laughs> so I ended up getting a job with the city of, of Grand Prairie. And uh, I drove the bus that summer for the wow. summer camp program. Uh, needless to say, I found out later that I should have had a CDL to drive the bus. <laughs> but. <laughs> But I ended up working there, and, and, and as I went to school here, um, mm -hmm. I continued to work with Grand Prairie. They hired me as a um, full-time, um, part-time rec specialist there. Okay. And um, once I finished up and started working on my bachelor's degree, they offered me a full-time position and just worked my way up through there. From wow. There. Okay. So what now that you're in the director role, what are some of the duties that your job entails? Um, you know, it, it's a lot of... A lot of networking. I, I, mm -hmm. I deal with a lot of uh, the city council members and um, mm -hmm. what their concerns are in their districts and dealing with a lot with the residents. Uh, I wow. deal a lot with contractors, um, master planning for the department. It's a pretty big department. We have mm -hmm. a lot of different um, areas of going on and just trying to make sure that everything is in sync. Uh, we're addressing the day-to-day -day operations and that we have a solid plan for the future to meet the needs of our residents. Well, I mean, that sounds like a big role. If I were interested in becoming a director like you, what are kind of what would I do to be able to kind of climb my way up there like you have? Um, one of the, the main things is budget. You know, we have a large budget. We have about a, a little over eighteen million dollar operational budget. Oh, really? So you have to okay. you know how to budget and yeah. and forecasting and projecting and and being able to look at what your community has and, and get a good feel for what they're going to need in the future and, and at the same time maintain the amenities that you have. Um, <laughs> you know, and that's, that's, that's a very hard conversation to have. Everybody wants to buy and build something new, but mm -hmm. you spend a lot of money on some of these facilities and there's a maintenance cost to that. There's upkeep to that. You Absolutely. don't want that to, go, to fall apart. So trying to balance those two things. So tell us a little bit about the different facilities that you are over. What examples yeah. would, can you give us? Um, right now in Irving, we have two family aquatic centers, so two small outdoor water parks. Nice. We have a um, couple of spray parks. We have six recreation centers. Six. We have six recreation centers. Throughout all of Irving. Throughout all of Irving. Okay. You have a teen center. You have an mm. adult center. Uh, we have multiple athletic fields. We have over 1,900 acres of parkland. Wow. Um, we have right now presently about 25 miles of trail throughout the city. 
Uh, we do numerous special events. We also have KIB, which is Keep Irving Beautiful. Oh, I love that. So, yeah, we have a <laughs> lot of things in our department. And we have a lot of things that moved in and out. At one point, um, the museum operations were under us, so I used mm -hmm. to be over museums. Oh, but you no longer are that. They no give longer. Give that one away. Give that away. We have, a, we have an outstanding arts director, uh, okay. Todd Hawkins. And when he came in, I was very graciously... <laughs> Giving that go. over to him, yes. But it was great to have that for a while. Well, a little birdie told me that maybe you were over a golf course or something. Have a golf course. Um, I another, personally know yeah. you like golf, so. No, you know, I've never played golf never, a day in my life. No. No, wait, wait a minute. You're over a golf project, but never played golf? Yes. Um, <laughs> one of the things, uh, and, 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 uh, and it's funny because I, I think I'm borderline arrogant. I, I, I am a very confident person. Okay. Um, the city had a golf course and when I was assistant director, it was, it was in pretty bad shape. Was it? And so mm -hmm. we were, you know, we, it hadn't been, there's been no major renovations mm -hmm. or anything for about 25, 30 years on the course. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we were at a point to where we needed to make either a major investment to the mm -hmm. course and renovate it sure. or to move away from it. And mm -hmm. so that project came to me and they were like, do you think you can, you can do it? And of course I said, yeah, I got it. Not a problem. Uh -huh. Um, and again, just going home and I was like, what am I thinking? <laughs> what did I get myself into? Yeah. And then when I saw the course, I was definitely like, okay, you definitely are trying to end your career because this is a train wreck. <laughs> um, but, um, one of the things I realized a long time ago is I don't have to know everything. I right. just have to know the right people. Absolutely. And so mm -hmm. connected with some really good people on my team, um, brought in some consultants to come out and evaluate the course. They did a study, gave us some really good recommendations on what direction to go, mm -hmm. um, presented those options to our city council. And then once they gave us a policy decision, um, went out, found an outstanding golf course architect and management company. And Sounds like fun, The rest though. is history. So yeah. is it already complete? Is it rare to go? It is complete. It is operational. Okay. Um, we finished up, last year was our first full year of operations. Mm -hmm. um, we were projecting about 34, 35,000 rounds. We didn't meet that goal, um, but we were shut down for three months because of COVID, COVID. and the weather. Mm -hmm. And that was during the prime season. Mm -hmm. So even with the shutdown, we managed that 20, 29,000 975 rounds. I was like, I would have paid for those additional 25 <laughs> rounds <laughs> to get 30,000. Awesome. So, yeah, we're really happy with the operation. So we, we definitely think it's going to do well for itself. Do I have to be a resident of Irving to utilize your facilities? No, and that's the great thing about it. It's okay. a public course. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you're an Irving resident, there's a break on the fee. But okay. for non-residents, you can use it. Um, and I think um, in the Metroplex, you can't find a better deal. For what you pay mm -hmm. for one round of golf at some of these private courses, you can get two rounds of golf and leave with change at uh, using our course. And it's brand new. And it's brand new. I love that. Well, since COVID has hit us and so many impacted us in so many different ways, what have you all done differently to deal with COVID in your facilities? You know what? Um, we've done a lot. We've moved, uh, especially in our fitness centers. We had to move mm -hmm. some things around to create some additional spacing. Mm -hmm. Uh, we limited the number of people that are allowed into our facilities, limited our hours of operation. You have to schedule time to come in and work out. So okay. we kind of made those adjustments with it. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a number of staff that were furloughed because of COVID in the sure. beginning. Mm -hmm. So we got real creative with that. Uh, as I mentioned, we have 1,900 acres of parkland and multiple yeah. facilities. So we brought people back. Um, lifeguards were painting facilities. That's awesome. Our rec staff was out in the park. Everybody's with chipping signage. in. Yeah, mm -hmm. just finding ways to keep people busy. So we had to make those adjustments. We're working a vaccination station along with the city of Grand Prairie. Okay. So we have a joint oh, vaccination right. station at the mm -hmm. racetrack there that we're doing, uh, staffing that with our folks. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's kind of a joke in the parks and recreation industry. We're kind of a catch-all. Mm -hmm. So COVID has created some unique opportunities, and, and I'm very proud of my team. They've stepped up and were able to adjust. It sounds like you guys have seized opportunities and helped the whole community as a whole. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, with 2021 here, are there some things on the calendar that we can look forward to? We're hoping, you know, yeah. we've, um, one of the projects we did out in Los Colinas, we created the Levy Event Plaza, which okay. is a, a plaza that is dedicated for special events out there in the Urban really? Center. Okay. So we're really hoping to be able to get back out there, especially for 4th of July. That's, Absolutely. That's our biggest event we usually well, have. Well, talk to us about that. Yeah. What, we, what? Okay. Eight to 10,000 people show up for that event. We have really? a big fireworks show. Yes. I'm your neighbor and I don't think I knew that. You know what? I, I need to get you guys out there. <laughs> Clearly. Yes. Eight to 10,000 okay. people. We are the 
only city that I know of in the, in the state of Texas that shoots fireworks from the water. Really? Yep, we, take, we totally utilize the lake, so we shoot mm -hmm. from the water, which creates a beautiful backdrop yeah. with the fireworks out there. Mm -hmm. um, we do a concert and, um, and other activities out there for the kids. So, so it's an all-day event? Well, we do two events. Okay. Um, in the morning time down in South Irving on Irving Boulevard, we do a parade. Mm -hmm. And then we break in the middle of the day when everybody heads up north and we get ready for the fireworks show oh. and the concert. So okay. Fourth of July is a big, big event for us. I, I, for the past 30 years, I've worked every Fourth of July except for last year. <laughs> well, so this one maybe? This one maybe. I'm hoping. I'm okay. definitely ready to get back to norm. Good. Joe, you're such an amazing role model. What advice would you give youngsters who are looking and aspiring to do something? What advice would you give them? You know, one of the things I like to tell young people all the time is never let other people set limitations on your possibilities. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is I've always kind of had three P's okay. to success. Patience, mm -hmm. persistence, and preparation. Um, one, I, I always hated being in an interview and people ask you a question, you're like, well, I can learn that. Yeah. If it's something that I was, that I wanted, I did everything I could to prepare for it before the opportunity came. Absolutely. So when the opportunity came, I was more than ready to step up into that role. Um, one of the things people ask me about being director was, you know, when, when did I start preparing? Mm -hmm. And I can literally remember being at a rec center and I'm looking at the recreation manager and the mm -hmm. parks and rec director and I'm looking at how old they are and how long I thought they would be working and when I thought they would be retiring. Sure. And at that point I looked at the rest of the team that we had and I was like, what separates me from them? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and at that point everybody had a bachelor's degree. Um, nobody had a master's degree. Nobody had a certification. Mm -hmm. So I made those two things that I, I got Excellent. prior to mm -hmm. the directorship even becoming open. I love it. So just prepare, be patient, and be persistent. Great advice. Yes, ma'am. If I were a volunteer, are there volunteer opportunities with the city of Irving and the Parks and Rec, Rec Department? There are great volunteer operations. Um, okay. uh, you can volunteer at the Recreation Center, any of the Recreation Centers. You can volunteer at the Senior Centers. We're mm. always looking for people to volunteer there. Mm -hmm. um, as I mentioned, we have Keep Irving Beautiful, which mm -hmm. does park cleanups and community cleanups and tree plantings. So wow. there's a number of ways to get involved in your community. So we just welcome that all the time. Well, good. Well, we were talking earlier and we mentioned the funny stories and things that sometimes come up, the yes. funny letters and emails you get. You want to share anything with the, the audience before we go? Um, sure. You know, <laughs> I, there, there's a, I, as I was telling you yeah. guys, Monday mornings are always fun. Uh -huh. um, you know, I opened up my emails and I'll have about 20 or 30 <laughs> emails in there and there's always one or two that I'm, I have to just really just scratch my shake, head right? about. Um, <laughs> And, and I think I shared with you guys the duck one. Mm -hmm. um, on Irving Boulevard, uh, there's Centennial Park that has a, okay. it has the Delaware Creek there. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of ducks that fly in seasonally and they, they're there. So I got this email about the ducks were leaving the park and they were crossing Irving Boulevard, stopping traffic. And, uh, yeah. and the lady suggested that we build a fence around the, <laughs> the creek to keep the ducks to from the ducks. walking out. And, <laughs> And my response was the ducks that flew in. You want us to <laughs> fence it around. And, you know, it's just amazing. We yeah. get that from um, people requesting police on our trails to slow down bikers and give them tickets for oh. riding too fast on our trails. So to, you get all the influx of all that to your email. Yeah, <laughs> that is the great thing about technology nowadays with emails. We're very accessible. And mm -hmm. somebody has a question. Um, they will email us. I, I've gotten emails two, three o'clock in the morning wow. on my email about a request. Uh, I've gotten emails on vacation. Uh, of course. You know, <laughs> yeah, it, it, and, and I, my sleep habits are really strange. I had one guy email me about uh, softball fields at two o'clock in the morning, and he was kind of surprised that when I responded answered. back. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, "What are you doing up?" I was, you know, the same thing you're doing emailing right, me. Exactly. <laughs> so, but yeah. Well, guys, I hope that you've enjoyed this time with Joe today, Mr. Joe Moses. Can you give us a contact if we had a question about volunteering or what's going on with the city of Irving and the Parks and Recreation? How would they get in contact with you? Sure. The easiest way to get in touch with me is to call the city of Irving, 972-721-2501. Or you can email me directly at jmoses at cityofirving.org. I can't thank you enough.
Guys, uh, another trailblazer in our community bringing to you today live. I appreciate, as always, you joining in. Don't forget, have a blessed and amazing day.